How did Devil's Hole get its name? How could a pretty Bermuda Bay remind anyone of the devil? In fact, Devil's Hole hides an unusual secret. Right near shore is the deepest point in Harrington Sound, about 80 feet deep. Occasionally, gas erupts from its depths, smelling strongly of sulfur, and sometimes even killing fish. And so the name Devil's Hole, as hell is supposed to smell like sulfur. But if you don't believe that the devil lives at Devil's Hole, then what is this phenomenon? Rachel Parsons leads a team of scientists from the Bermuda Institute of Ocean Sciences. The team is doing a long-term study of an underwater dead zone that forms every year in Harrington Sound's deepest point at Devil's Hole. We're sampling Devil's Hole. The reason we're sampling Devil's Hole is because during the summer months there's a uh, thermally driven stratification. Uh, as the water warms up, it doesn't mix with the bottom water, and so the bottom layer becomes oxygen limited. Every summer, the warm, still waters of Harrington Sound form into layers with different temperatures. The layers do not mix unless the water gets rough. One of these layers gets trapped on the bottom of Devil's Hole in a very large, collapsed cave. Because the layer does not mix with the rest of Harrington Sound, no fresh oxygen comes in. The creatures that live in the hole use up all the oxygen and then they die. This creates what is called an anoxic dead zone. An area with no oxygen, where only certain types of bacteria and microbes can live. As autumn weather gets rough, waves stir up the water layers and the dead zone disappears until the next summer when warm weather and still water allow it to form again. Humans need to study dead zones because in 2010, scientists discovered that global warming may be removing oxygen from the ocean, creating new dead zones or making existing dead zones larger. Globally, dead zones occur in several places, off the coasts of California and Oregon, in the Black Sea, to name a few. But the Devil's Hole dead zone is uniquely easy to study. At Devil's Hole, the water is shallow, warm, and clear. So because it is so easy to study, Devil's Hole is a unique and valuable dead zone laboratory. Because the Devil's Hole dead zone disappears each year and then reforms again the following year, it creates a unique opportunity for scientists to study how dead zones form. Parsons and her team are trying to discover if the Devil's Hole dead zone follows the same patterns as dead zones in other places. <laughs> but first, Parsons and her team will use probes to see if the dead zone is still there or if rough weather has turned over the waters of Harrington Sound, eliminating the dead zone. pH at 8.48. Anna is using another probe to measure oxygen levels. Here I am putting down a CTD, to, uh, which is a probe that will measure salinity, temperature, oxygen of the water. The probe drops through the water layers, taking measurements as it goes. Anna's readings are good. Good news, it's still anoxic. Excellent! It hasn't turned over yet. Yay! Rough seas have not yet wiped out the dead zone. So using the probes, Parsons and her team will now measure for all of the characteristics of dead zones, such as a lot of silt and sediment, very little oxygen, a lot of bacteria, and abundant quantities of the chemicals and compounds that bacteria produce. The team is also measuring light levels using a different kind of probe. Stacy monitors light levels as the probe sinks. The dead zone should contain a lot of sediment, so light levels should drop the deeper the probe goes. Light levels will also indicate whether the dead zone is expanding or not. Yeah, so right about what, 15 meters, the light levels drop significantly, which is great because that should correlate with the anoxic layer. Yeah, so it hopefully means that there's a lot of particles in the water. We're actually looking to see if the anoxic layer or the low oxygen layer has um, 
expanded spatially, which means um, over space or temporally over time. So did it start earlier in the year? Did it go later in the year? Is it going higher in the water column? In other words, is global warming and warmer water causing the Devil's Hole dead zone to expand? So today, Anna found that the oxygen was dropping between 19 and 20 meters. It usually doesn't drop until around 22 meters, so it is getting higher in the water column. And Stacy found that there was a jump in the light availability between 17 and 19 meters. And we suspect that that might be particles, which means there might be a lot of bacteria down there doing something. So we're kind of interested to see what they're doing. As the dead zone animals die from lack of oxygen, the amount of bacteria rises dramatically. The bacteria generate a lot of organic carbon and other chemicals. The entire process makes the dead zone into a stinky, murky, sedimentary layer with very little light. To get samples of that stinky water, Becky uses yet another probe. This probe has ports at both ends. She lowers it with the ports open. When the probe reaches the dead zone, a heavy weight is dropped that slams the ports shut, trapping the dead zone water inside. We're sampling for nutrients, so we're looking for nitrite, nitrate, ammonia, silicate, phosphate. The dissolved organic carbon will tell us is organic carbon being produced by the bacteria and the other microbes at Devil's Hole at depth. We hypothesize that there would be more organic carbon at the bottom than there would be at the top and preliminary data shows that this is correct. The organic carbon sludge is highly visible. So this is at like surface and then this is at depth so it shows you how many particles are at depth. Laboratory analysis proves the team's hypothesis. The white dots are bacteria. As the samples go deeper, the bacteria levels rise. Becky's dead zone samples can also be used to compare oxygen levels to samples from above the dead zone. So the color in this one shows that there is oxygen present because the chemicals bind with the oxygen, but I'm not actually sure what the reaction is. Uh, this one has got no oxygen, uh, which is main, well, the clearest indicator is because it's white, but then they'll analyze them back at the lab. This series of graphs shows what happens as the probes descend into the dead zone. The temperature and oxygen levels suddenly drop, but bacteria levels suddenly go way up. The team's work proves that the dead zone is still there and the chemical processes are happening as predicted. The bacteria, microbes, gas, and stinky sludge are all increasing, but summer is ending. Soon a hurricane or autumn storm will stir up the water, turn over the dead zone, and release the stinky gas to the surface, where it will briefly cause a bad sulfur smell. This process happens every year and gives Devil's Hole its curious name. But Devil's Hole is more than just a name. This is a coastal environment, so it can be put into the context of other coastal environments like Oregon, uh, California. So it can be used as a laboratory for dead zones. And Bermuda's unique natural laboratory is already yielding important information. These graphs show Devil's Hole dead zone measurements from past years. The shrinking red areas increase over the years, meaning the cold water dead zone is increasing in size. In the top graph, the growing purple area shows the low oxygen zone is also increasing in size. In the bottom graph, the growing green and yellow areas show increasing bacteria. We learned that the oxygen minimum zone is expanding up into the water column further than uh, we expected. And the temperature difference between the surface and the bottom has also increased. Basically the stratification is more, is better. And there's a chance, you know, in future years that we might not get turnover. So if temperatures keep rising, winter storms may not mix the layers, leaving the dead zone in place and growing. It sits in a submerged cave. But if it starts to come up into the water column, it can expand around the bottom of Harrington Sound. And basically, Harrington Sound could become a, like a dead sea. And you won't get the diversity and the marine life that many of us enjoy in Harrington Sound. 
There are specific species that are only found in Harrington Sound and we really do need to protect them.